Principal Bonner, we can start. Hello, I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. Thank you so very much for joining us and taking the time. Uh, my name is Nancy Bonner. Uh, I'm the principal of Highview School. This is my fourth year as principal and my 24th year in the district. Ms. Leahy. Good evening, everyone. My name is Katie Leahy. I am the assistant principal at Highview Elementary, and this is my 25th year in the district. And tonight we look forward to providing you with some information about Highview School. And I'd like to start off by sharing our district mission statement. The Nanuet Union Free School District is committed to the personal development of each student so that upon graduation, he or she is prepared and inspired to apply learning in a changing, complex, and interdependent world. You'll see here our critical 21st century skills as well as our belief statements of core values. We design our lessons and our building goals based on these skills and core values. And you'll see them throughout the presentation this evening. So I'd like to start off by reminding you, which I don't think I have to, because I'm sure you remember that very first day of kindergarten, just like it was yesterday. And now here we are, your child is making their next journey from GW Miller to Highview Elementary School where they will stay with us for third and fourth grade. And we cannot wait to welcome them. And tonight we're going, you're going to hear from several people in our wonderful team. Karen Brook is our third grade team leader and third grade teacher. Mrs. Mitloff is our special education facilitator and support staff leader. Kelly Corderoni is our special area team leader and our teacher extraordinaire. And Melanie Sadoff will join us to talk about our orchestra program. Our guidance counselor and social work, you'll recognize these names, Mrs. Lipson and Mrs. Weiss. And you've already met Ms. Leahy and I, and you know Ms. Leahy from GW Miller School. Some important things for you to know about next year. In third grade, we'll have seven sections. So that means our students will be divided into seven classrooms. Those classroom teachers are Mrs. Amen, Mrs. Brooke, Mrs. De Janeiro, Ms. Kern, Ms. McRobbie, Mrs. Mers, and Mrs. Stead. And in addition to the classroom teachers, we also have support staff. And those include Ms. Carey, Mrs. King, Mrs. Lindsley, Mr. Valley, and Mrs. Prochi. All of your all of our children, all of our students and your children will be touring Highview Elementary on their first day back in September, um, which will be exciting for them. They'll walk around with their new class and their new teacher. And placement letters will be mailed in August. So that is when you'll find out uh, who your child's teacher will be for next year. And on this slide, you can see our third grade team. These are the classroom teachers that I just spoke to you about. Okay. Um, we, although we couldn't be here uh, to welcome you in person tonight, we really wanted to provide you with an inside glimpse of Highview. So let's take a look. <laughs> Welcome to Highview. We're going to begin our virtual tour of the wonderful Highview Elementary School. And let's start right here in the main office, the heart and soul of our building. Mrs. Campbell and Mrs. Carbone are here to greet us. Welcome. Welcome to Highview. And this is our bus entrance for arrival and dismissal. So our third graders will get to know this entrance very well. And our high-dose bus safety program is the same bus safety program with the same rules 
as Miller. So that'll be another familiar, familiar program to our third graders. <laughs> some very important places that everyone needs to know about. So first stop is our library. And normally we would come in and find Mrs. Kieran here, but everybody's going to be happy to know that you will have a familiar face with Miss Hink here at the Highview Library. And now the nurse's office, right here on the first floor, and we are lucky to have Mrs. Ryan. Hi, everybody, incoming third graders. I'm Mrs. Ryan, and I'm the nurse here at Highview, and I am just so looking forward to meeting all of you. Now, some of you I might remember from when I worked at Miller, but have a great summer, and we'll see you in September. <laughs> And this is our music room. This is the high view gym, and we'll see Mr. Barron and Mr. Pentelon here holding class. And welcome to our gymatorium. This is our auditorium. Hello, second graders, soon to be third graders, it's Mrs. Lipson, and just like you're going to be doing soon, I just walked into the doors of Highview, and look at who's greeting me. We have Kelso and Lily, and they are happy and excited to see you here at Highview. Have a great summer. I miss you, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for taking that journey with us. And um, this will be, this tonight's presentation will be posted on the website so that if you wanted to go through this and show your children the tour, that would be great. Um, so now we will go a little bit further into the third grade program with Mrs. Brooke. Sorry about that, I gotta get my camera on. Hello and welcome to our presentation tonight. So as you look at our schedule, the first thing that you will notice is the largest block is our first period, which is for English language arts, also known as ELA. Um, we, in ELA, we are focusing on reading, writing, speaking, and listening. As you notice on the right-hand side, there are four different programs and I, I'd like to address address each one of them. I'd like to start off with the programs that we use for building the fundamentals. The first one is foundations. We use foundations to reinforce letter sound combinations and spelling rules. We use wordly wise to enhance uh, the children's vocabulary. Both of these programs are used to support our Good Habits Great Readers uh, reading program and our Good Habits Great Readers writing program. The main reading goal that we have for our students is to assist them in learning how to actively engage text through a variety of reading strategies. We continue the shift from learning to read to reading to learn. Our writing program's focus is to further develop our students' ability to clearly and thoroughly respond to text and generate their own writing pieces. We continue to work on capitalization, punctuation, and sentence structure, while we also address paragraph structure, including topic and concluding sentences, details, and descriptive language. After ELA, the children have their specials just as they had in Miller. There's art, music, STEM, library, and PE. After their specials, they go to lunch and recess. And as noted here, whenever possible, we do try to get them outside uh, for recess. 
Once recess and lunch are over, the children return to the classroom for math. Our main program is called Eureka Math. This is a different program than the children are currently using in second grade. Within Eureka Math, there are seven different modules or units, but the ones that we spend most of our time are on are multiplication and division and fractions. Throughout all seven units, we emphasize problem solving strategies. Additionally, we are fortunate to have other programs that help support the children in their math skills, one of which is reflex math, which is used to build basic math facts. When the children come in in September, we typically put them on addition and subtraction facts while we're teaching them the concepts behind multiplication and division. Once they've understood the whys behind multiplication and division, then we flip them over in reflex to start practicing their uh, multiplication division basic facts. After math, we have what's called IE. IE stands for intervention and enrichment. And this is the, the period where the children may receive additional services such as speech or OT or some type of remedial math or ELA. But they also can participate in enrichment activities such as researching within the classroom or music lessons or technology. Our last period of the day is science and social studies. And in third grade, we um, switch between the units. So we'll have one science, then we'll have a social studies, and then we'll go back to a science. In science, the children will be learning about forces, including electromagnetism, uh, organisms and their traits, habitats, and weather and climate. In social studies, we begin the year by learning math and geography skills. And then we use that um, in relation to the United States economy, government, and culture. Once we've built that as a background, we then explore other countries such as Brazil through those lenses. I would like to emphasize that the science and social studies period is an instructional period. So while we certainly understand that there'll be occasions where the children will need to leave school early, we really would appreciate it if you would keep in mind that it is an instructional period um, so that because it's important for the children to be there um, as much as possible. Thank you very much, Mrs. Brooke. And now I'd like to introduce Ms. Corderoni. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I might look familiar, even though my hair does change color from time to time. Uh, I'm Ms. Q. Uh, I am the art teacher at Miller and at Highview, and I have the pleasure of being the Highview special area team leader as well. So the good news is uh, that some of the uh, teachers that work at Miller also work at Highview. So when your children transition up to Highview, they'll have some uh, familiar faces to greet them when they join us. So you saw the tour. Sorry, I didn't get to see the art room. I think we were doing something really messy that day. So I didn't want to show, but uh, we do a lot of really cool stuff at Highview, a lot of advanced things such as clay. Um, in the music room, you saw from the video, a huge, beautiful classroom and pictured here on the slide is our new music teacher, Miss Coakley, who's wonderful. And she's also doing recorder karate there outside. So just like PE on good weather days, they go outside sometimes to sing and play instruments. Um, we have STEM at Highview, just as we do at Miller. And we're going to ask you now to start saving up some of those recyclables, cardboard tubes, plastic cups. We might be reaching out to you for some fun projects uh, that we can use those for. Uh, also, as you saw in the video, we have two gyms at Highview uh, where Mr. Pentamone and Mr. Barron are running all sorts of fun activities. Uh, in the library, we have Ms. Hink again and uh, a different teaching assistant, Ms. Bergling, who um, helps her out uh, with our students there. Uh, not listed uh, is Mr. Lenane. He's the digital literacy teacher. He will still be around from time to time in case the uh, in case the kids are wondering what happened to that tall guy that they thought was a robot. He's still there to help us out and we'll be pushing in for some fun lessons. Uh, for specials, the schedule is very similar as it used to be in years past um, before all of this craziness. So your children will be getting a rotational schedule with all the specials. So wear sneakers on PE and don't wear your favorite white suit on art days. Uh, I think that's all the good stuff. And of course, if anybody ever has any questions, feel free to reach out through email um, or ask us at school. Thank you so much, Ms. Porteroni. And now I'd like to introduce Mrs. Mitloff. Hi, good evening. I'm Mrs. Mitloff. 
Um, at Highview, we offer building level instructional supports in remedial reading and remedial math. Um, building level student data is looked at very carefully. Um, and then we remediate the students based on that data. We of course offer, offer special education services um, that's based on your child's IEP or 504 plan. There's consultant teacher services, speech, occupational therapy, physical therapy, counseling, and these are all determined at the CSE level if your child is a CSE child or a 504 child. Um, as Mrs. Brooke told you, we have an IE period, which stands for intervention and enrichment. Um, and that allows the Highview support staff the time to meet your students' needs without missing any new instruction. This is a time when students move throughout the building to receive whatever services they need. Um, so it's a really nice period because nobody feels like they're being singled out. People are going all over the place. Children are moving throughout the building um, for lots of different reasons. So that's our support services. Glad you could make this meeting. Thank you so much, Mrs. Mitloff. And now our instrumental music program with Ms. Sadoff. Hi there. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm Ms. Sadoff. I'm Melanie Sadoff. I am so, I'm thrilled to be here. This is my first year at Nanuet teaching, and I, I'm so excited to um, get as many people playing an instrument next year as possible. So Nanuet has a really special third grade instrumental program, unlike a lot of districts in our, uh, in our, in our county. Um, they offer a third grade instrumental program. And so, um, Chris, if you click on the, the gift that I have there, um, you'll get right to the website and you'll see that there is a couple of things that you'll you'll um, be able to find. Um, first thing that you'll see is just a little introduction to my website. Um, so just me talking about who I am and you can see a bunch of different things on here. Um, I would highly encourage you and your child going onto this website together and you can access this through the Highview website. Um, there are instrument demonstrations. There's um, a whole page on why choosing Instrument, uh, instrumental music is beneficial for a holistic education. And um, there also is rental information. I've already been um, coming into classes um, through in Mrs. Coakley's music classes. So I've been meeting some of your wonderful students already um, and they've been signing up. So I'm, I'm very excited for all of the music we're gonna make together. And um, on that slide is also just my contact information. If you have um, questions beforehand, you can always email me. Um, and thank you so much for letting me um, be part of this. And you can sign up by going to Highview's homepage to find instrument demonstrations and the sign up and so much more. So we look forward to offering that opportunity uh, to our incoming third graders. And now Mrs. Weiss. Hi everyone. Um, I am the social worker for Miller and for Highview. Um, we're so happy to have you guys moving up. Like Ms. Q said, some of us are shared between buildings. So a lot of your children will know who I am from being at George Miller. Um, so we offer a lot of programs here at Highview and some of them are continuations of what we started at Miller and some are new programs. Um, so one of the things in terms of character education, and this is just a brief overview, as you know, there's, we kind of feel the temperature and we kind of offer based on what is needed. Um, but one of the things we do is we do word of the month Word of the month is every month, both Highview and Miller have a word and that word is incorporated into their academics and literature. It's used in gym in every subject. We also continue using Kelso's Choice, which is a conflict management program um, where by the time they get to third and fourth grade, it kind of ages up a little bit um, and we use this as a way to solve our own conflicts and to know when um, when we need to involve other people. Um, and then we also are a bucket filling school because we do in Nanuet think kindness is very important. And so we do like for our students to celebrate kindness by filling theirs and others kindness, bucket, sorry. Um, we also do social emotional development through growth mindset, mindfulness and ruler. Um, growth mindset, we're always encouraging 
our students to have a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. So it's not a matter of not being do something. It's not being able to do something yet that you would like to do. There is no one that can tell you not to do something. Mindfulness, being self-aware, knowing yourself, being comfortable with yourself. Um, and then we also have monthly SEL assemblies. I'm really hoping this year that the SEL assemblies can take place live. They've been over Zoom this year due to the pandemic. Um, we've done a few in class, in individual classes, but it would be nice to have everyone all together in a big assembly. Um, we also do individual um, counseling sessions. We do whole class guidance sessions and we do small group sessions as well. Um, Ms. Lipson created for the pandemic a virtual calming corner and it's posted in the counselor's corner on our learning management system. So you can actually access that through the High View page. And definitely there's a lot of great resources to check out on there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Weiss. We're happy to uh, be able to bring to you um, the depth of our social emotional learning program. And we'll continue that with Mrs. Lipson. Hi, I'm Melissa Lipson. I'm the school counselor at Miller and Highview. I've been in the district for 21 years. This is my 31st year in education. Um, in addition to developing strong academic skills, it's really important that students have the necessary skills to become resilient and successful in life. At Highview, we teach students these skills so they can form healthy relationships with themselves and others. We know that our emotions drive our attention, our memory and our learning. They drive our mental health and decisions that we make as well as our relationships. So to complement our already existing programs uh, such as bucket filling and Kelso's choice and word of the month and growth mindset and the power of yet, as Ms. Weiss just stated, um, we're also focusing on the ruler approach to social emotional learning, where students uh, will be working on the five New York State core competencies, as you see here, which are needed to be successful in school and in life. They are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, decision-making, and relationship skills. We teach these skills through classroom lessons, as well as our social-emotional character assemblies at Highview. Next slide. Um, so there is social-emotional learning in action everywhere in this building from special areas to guidance um, in a, into the classrooms. In addition to social emotional learning that takes place in the classrooms, guidance and special area staff incorporate social emotional learning in the lessons and discussions that they deliver to students, as you can see in this slide. Now, um, there are four anchor, anchor tools to the ruler program. The charter is a tool um, that every classroom maintains. We as a staff also have a charter, um, how we wanna feel when we come to work each day. Um, and that's what we do with our students. It acts as a promise where everyone agrees to how they wanna feel in the classroom. Um, the mood meter, allow students and adults to check in on their emotions, which the teachers do uh, daily with the, with the children. If they find that students are, you know, are maybe in the red or need, um, you know, if they're feeling angry or upset or frustrated and they're having difficulties working through those strong emotions, uh, the teacher would refer them to um, one of the counselors at school and then we would talk to the child. Um, and it allows, you know, it allows the adults to be able to check in on their uh, students' emotions. The meta moment is a tool that teaches self-regulation. Um, your second graders, your children, I, I just went to all the classrooms, the second grade classrooms, and did a lesson on how they can show up each day being their best self by taking a meta moment which is you know, a pause and it gives us a chance to stop and think on how we are going to respond in that situation. Then the blueprint 
is the last anchor tool. It's based on creating empathy and really looking at another person's point of view. Um, parent workshops are, will be given throughout the school year. We did a few this year. Um, we're going to continue next year to best align the work that we're doing at school with the work you're doing at home with your children. If you have any questions, any concerns, um, please feel free to reach out to uh, myself or Mrs. Weiss for support. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Lipson. And so I hope that gives you a um, little bit of a glimpse into our academic programs, our social emotional learning programs and the structure of the school day, including our special area programs. And now we'll move on to some uh, more procedural aspects of Highview School. Um, and as I mentioned earlier in the tour, um, we have our bus safety program, which is a continuation of the program that we started two years ago. Um, it's, K, it's a K-4 collaboration since our students share the buses. Um, I just wanna remind everybody, it's all based on three basic rules, which are be a good listener, use a quiet voice and sit safely in your seat. Um, and what we do to incentivize the program is to offer um, a good behavior tag and then announce the bus of the month so that we can uh, recognize and reward um, everyone. Our goal really is bus safety and a safe ride to and from school. Arrival and dismissal procedures. So uh, this is always important information that everyone is eager to learn. Um, Basically, our bus procedures are developed over the summer. So we're waiting um, for those to be finalized over the summer. And once that's finalized, we can then finalize or all of our arrival and dismissal procedures for parents who want to either drop their children at school, pick them up, or have them walk home. So please be on the lookout this summer. We will get that information to you um, probably in August. So as you are all keenly aware, our um, challenges have been over the last 15 months, best practices for health and safety. And things are thankfully um, changing in the right direction. And so we are looking forward to and always following up with updated guidance from the New York State Department of Health and the New York State Education Department um, and um, communicating those changes in procedures and protocols uh, to parents on a regular basis are three mitigating factors for health and safety throughout this pandemic have been mask wearing, hand sanitizing and hand washing and social distancing. And as, as things change and hopefully change and continue to change in the right direction, we will be communicating with you what the most current guidelines are and how we will be reopening the schools in the fall. And um, we are all very eager to have um, some more normalcy in our procedures and protocols, but we will be, rest assured, we will be communicating these to you in a timely manner um, as they change. So this slide is so important to us and the message is really true. We cannot do this without you. This is a partnership between school and home. So here are a few things um, that we can do together and some things you could work on at home to really help make next year successful for your child. The first is to establish and stay with a consistent bedtime routine. So children this young do need a lot of sleep um, please make sure that you have uh, a healthy bedtime for them. Um, have them spend some time reading prior to going to bed as well. Also, fresh air and exercise are so, so important. Many times when our children are leaving at dismissal, um, you know, yelling to them on the bus, go outside and play when you get home. Don't turn on a television or go on a device, which leads me to the next point, uh, the importance of having device-free times with your family. Um, so that you can do other things such as family conversation, play board games, uh, family dinners. So trying to prioritize those things um, is really fantastic for your family as a whole and also for our students. And finally, just to really be positive about school, your children 
are always listening and watching everything that you do. And so it's important that they learn from you the message of how great school is and that it's really a positive environment where they can learn and be their best selves. And as Mrs. Leahy said, we could not do this without you and your partnership is and always will be very vital to us. So to continue preparing for the journey to Highview, we're very excited um, this year in, in light of the last 15 months and in really trying to close um, academic gaps and social emotional learning gaps, we are happy to provide um, this weekly reader called Summer Express for over the summer where um, our students have been working so hard this year and we're very proud of the gains that they've made. And so we are looking forward to continuing to practice those skills that they've learned in second grade and that are needed to really kind of get a jump start on third grade and hit the ground running in the fall as soon as they arrive. So uh, your second graders will be introduced to these resource, this resource um, in the next week or two. Um, and then they really are, um, you, know, you know, eager to take advantage of what these skill builders have to offer over the summer. And our third grade team is excited to welcome your students into um, school in the fall with these materials and to reward them and honor them for the work that they've done. So please be on the lookout for these books and we're looking forward to um, really starting third grade with a lot of good, strong skills. Okay. In the spirit of partnership, um, we would like to ask you to encourage your children to read over the summer. The, um, the scholastic book that you just saw, saw does have some reading passages in them, but they are rather short. So if you have the opportunity to have your children either read a book independently and you talk to them about it, or you take turns reading the uh, book together, or possibly listening to a book on CD and then discussing it, any of those um, ways of reading really will build, hopefully, a love of reading. And it will also reinforce what we do in third grade, which is really teaching them how to actively engage text. So we would, we would really appreciate it if you could do some reading with them or simply show an interest in something that they are reading. Um, in terms of math, um, we would appreciate it if you could have your children play games with numbers and practice their facts. As I had mentioned, the um, reflex in September will help with their addition and subtraction facts, but the better they know their addition and subtraction facts, the easier time they'll have with multiplication and division. So um, if you see that your children are really struggling with the facts or they don't really know them fluently, even playing quick little games with multiplication cards and, um, or I should say, um, a deck of cards, and then you each put one down and say, you know, add them together quickly, whatever, that will all help them. Um, and it will go a long way in helping them to build problem solving skills, which they will need as well. Thank you, Mrs. Brook. And so we'd like to remind you and invite you to stay informed, get to know the Highview homepage, um, you can access guidance from there. You can access student links and resources. Of course, our famous digital backpack because we'd like to keep you informed. We also are um, enjoying going paperless. So the digital backpack gives us that opportunity. Um, you uh, will receive, just like you did from Miller, alerts in our K-12 system. So we call those our Highview alerts regarding important information. That will be via text and email. Uh, if you are users of AOL and Yahoo accounts, as you've been reminded, um, nanu.sd.org emails very often go to spam, so you have to release those just to make sure that um, we're all staying on top of things so that you don't miss anything. And just make sure at the beginning of the year that your teacher has the correct email address and contact information. And please, our, don't forget to join our wonderful elementary PTA and you can visit the PTA website at nanuatelementary.com. And we wanna thank all of our PTA 
uh, members and PTA volunteers for everything that you do for our schools. Again, we couldn't do it without you and your help and the, and the programs that you provide for our students, we appreciate so very much. For technology, for technology and resources. So please visit the district website, nanuetsd.org. You'll find lots of district-wide information, K-12 here, and also calendar for the school year. Also, please visit our Highview homepage. This will give you a lot of information. That's where our student links and resources are located. So if your children go there, they can find the links for the school programs that they use. There's also a parent links and resources page. That's where you can find the digital backpack. The parent portal is there. That's uh, where you can access your child's report card. And also um, we send out K-12 alerts as well when we have something important we need to tell you. For our Chromebooks, all children are going to be allowed to keep their Chromebook for over the summer. So they can continue to work on the student links and those web programs. But just a reminder that children are only allowed to use school programs on the school issued Chromebooks. So they're not permitted to um, go on YouTube and search videos or anything like that. So please just remind your children of that for over the summer. And also the AUPs. So those are the forms that need to be signed so that your children can continue to use the internet at our school. We sent them home with your children right now as second graders. Many of you have already returned them to Miller, so we're grateful for that. And if you haven't returned them yet, if you could just please get them back uh, to your student's teacher at Miller in the next three weeks, then we can uh, bring them up to Highview. Thank you. And important people and resources. Um, if you don't know about our Nanua Family Resource Center, they are an amazing resource. Uh, Ms. Roseanne Mercado and Kathy Gregory are there for you. And they offer programs before and after school care and hopefully enrichment programs coming up next year. In our main office, we have Margie Campbell and Jeannie Carbone. Some of you may know them, but you may not know that Margie Campbell is retiring at the end of this year. So we'll have someone new there and we're going to miss Margie, but we wish her very, very well. And our wonderful school nurse is Eileen Ryan. She's always available to help and she's a fabulous resource. And as Ms. Leahy pointed out, our home access center, um, you should have access to that. Um, if you have any difficulties with that, you can contact our main office and uh, we will point you in the right direction. Mrs. Meyer is our person who um, would be able to help with that. And our PTA president, thank you very much, Ms. Georgia Lessie. And we really look forward to um, working with our PTA this coming school year. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Instagram at Nanuet Highview, Facebook Nanuet Public Schools Highview, and Twitter NUFSD Highview. So on behalf of our team, I would like to say thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to welcoming our new third graders to Highview in the fall. And please be on the lookout over the summer. We will communicate any changes in procedures and protocols or any new information about arrival and dismissal. It would all be communicated with you through email, through our homepage, um, through a text alert. So just be on the lookout for those things because we want to keep everyone informed and to work as partners with you in moving your child along to the next step in their journey, moving from George W. Miller to Highview Elementary School for their third and fourth grade experience. So thank you very, very much. And if you have other questions, please don't hesitate to email any of us who are on the presentation this evening. And thank you and be well. <laughs>